गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स आप सबका बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन इस चैनल में हम लोग बात करेंगे बहुत ही बेहतरीन प्रश्नों की एक श्रृंखला सॉल्व करेंगे आनंद पूर्वक मस्ती पूर्वक बने रहिए इस चैनल में देखते रहिए सीखते रहिए आगे बढ़ते रहिए क्योंकि कहा गया है जो गिरने से डरते हैं वो कभी उड़ान नहीं भरते शॉर्ट में इसको और दूसरे शब्दों में समझाऊँ तो अगर आपको नदी पार करना है तो पहले उसमें कूदना पड़ेगा नदी के किनारे बैठ आप नदी की गहराई नदी की स्ट्रेंथ को समझ नहीं सकते हैं यही बात हमारे जीवन के साथ भी लागू होती है जीवन में सफल होने के लिए जीवन में जो रास्ते हैं उसको चलना पड़ेगा उसमें दौड़ना पड़ेगा रेंगना पड़ेगा तो बने रहिए इस चैनल में शुरू से अंत तक ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर क्वेश्चन एवरी क्वेश्चन विल बी फ्रॉम इकोनॉमिक सेक्शन ऑल द बेस्ट तो आपके स्क्रीन पर आपका पहला सवाल इकोनॉमिक सेक्शन से है वो है स्पेशल ड्राइंग राइट्स एस डी आर बास्केट ऑफ करेंसी इंक्लूड्स द स्पेशल ड्राइंग राइट्स एस डी आर बास्केट ऑफ करेंसी इंक्लूड्स जापानीज एन चाइनीज युआन रशियन रूबल ओनली एंड ओनली वन एंड टू इज द राइट आंसर स्पेशल ड्राइंग राइट्स एस डी आर आर एन आर्टिफिशियल करेंसी इंस्ट्रूमेंट क्रिएटेड बाय द आई एम एफ which uses them for internal accounting purpose for internal accounting purposes the value of the sdr is calculated from a weighted basket of major currencies including the us dollar the euro the japanese yen the chinese yuan the british pound the sdr interest rate sdri provides the basis for calculating the interest rate charged to member countries when they borrow from imf and paid to the members for their remunerated creditors position in the imf quota the amount contributed to the imf quota of a country is denominated expressed in sdr India's foreign exchange reserve is also incorporated as DR. In India, yeah, India is a member of which of the following regional trade agreement? ASEAN, APEC, RCEP. Only and only RCEP को बाहर कीजिए और बिल्कुल इसका सही जवाब है D. इसमें से किसी का भी हम लोग member नहीं है. Association of South East Asian. It is an economic union comprising ten members of state in South East Asia, which promotes intergovernmental cooperation, facilities economic, political, security, military, educational, socio-cultural integration between its members and its other countries in Asia. ASEAN's primary objective was to accelerate economic growth through the social progress and cultural development. Members Brunei. कंबोडिया इंडोनेशिया लाओस मलेशिया म्यांमार फिलीपींस सिंगापुर थाईलैंड एंड वियतनाम एशिया पैसिफिक इकोनॉमिक कॉपोरेशन एपेक इट इज एन इंटर गवर्नमेंटल फोरम फॉर ट्वेंटी वन मेंबर्स इकोनॉमिक्स इन दैसिफिक रिम दैट प्रोमोट्स फ्री ट्रेड थ्रू आउट एशिया पैसिफिक रीजन FAC is a recognized as one of the highest level multilateral bloc and the oldest forum in the Asia Pacific region and exert significant global influence members 21 members in FAC Australia Brunei Darul Salaam Canada Chile Chinese Taipei Hong Kong, China, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, People's Republic of China, Peru, Republic of Korea, Republic of Philippines, Russian Federation, Singapore, Thailand, United States of America, and Vietnam. Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership (RCEP). It is a free trade agreement among the asia pacific nations members brunei darul salaam 
कंबोडिया इंडोनेशिया लाओस मलेशिया म्यांमार फिलीपींस सिंगापुर थाईलैंड वियतनाम ऑस्ट्रेलिया चाइना जापान साउथ कोरिया न्यूजीलैंड इंडिया वाज अ मेंबर ऑफ आर से ड्राफ्टिंग कमिटी फ्रॉम इट्स इंसेप्शन इन 2011 बट इन नवंबर 2019 टीम इट डिसाइडेड टू ऑप्ट आउट इंडिया पुल आउट of the deal primarily due to the concern of dumping of manufactured goods from China and agriculture and dairy products from Australia and New Zealand potentially affecting its one domestic industrial and farming sector. With the reference to the World Bank Group, consider the following. IDA provides guarantees for the investor in the developing countries against non commercial risk ibrda provides the interest free loans and grants the governments of the poorest countries which are the correct about ibrda yeah, fir world bank only and only d because both are incorrect ida that means international development association it is a part of the world bank yes that helps the world's poorest countries overseen by 173 shareholder nations ida aims to reduce poverty by providing zero to low interest loan called credit and grants for the programs that boost the economic growth reduce inequalities improve people's living condition ida is one of the largest sources of assistance for the world's 74 poorest countries and it is the single largest source of the donor funds for basic social services in these countries ida lends money on a occasional on a consistent terms this means that the ida credits have a zero or very low interest charge and the payments are stretched over 30 to 40 years including 5 to 10 years a grace period idea also provides grant to the countries at a risk of debt distress international bank for reconstruction and development ibrda it's a global development cooperative owned by 189 189 members i very aware ibrd have 189 members countries as the largest development bank in the world it supports the world bank groups missions by providing loans guarantee risk management products advisory service to the middle income and credit worthy low income countries as well as by coordinating responses to the regional and global challenges multilateral investment guarantee agency miga it is a international institution that promotes investment in developing countries by offering the political economic risk insurance the agency aims to support economic growth reduce poverty improve people's lives lives through the foreign direct investment into the developing countries marakas agreement lead to the establishment of it's a world bank or world trade organization it's a world trade organization wto marcus agreement marcus ya yeah, marcus agreement manifested by the marcus declaration was an agreement signed in marcus morocco by 123 nations on april 1994 marking the culmination of the 8 year long uruguay round and establishing the world trade organization which officially come into being on 1st january 1995 wto was formed as a replacement for gat ya cat in 1995 in this context consider the following statement gate lit gate lacked the institutional structure the rules of the gate were only for trade in goods and services it did not include aspect of intellectual property rights i think so but let's see
only see what the statement correct general agreement on tariffs and trade get was fully a legal agreement between many countries whose overall purpose was to promote international trade by reducing or eliminating trade barriers such as tariffs quotas according to its preamble its purpose was substantial reduction of tariffs and other trade barriers and the elimination of preferences on a reciprocal and mutually advantageous basis the gate was first discussed during the united nations conference on trade and employment and was outcome of the failure of the negotiating governments to create a international trade organization itu gate did not have any institutional existence but have a small secretariat while the wto is an intergovernmental organization with its one headquarter and staff the scope of the gate was only limited to trade in goods while the scope of wto includes both traded goods and trade within the service sector and as well as intellectual property rights the gate remained in effect until january 1 1995 when the world trade organization was established after the agreement by 123 nations in marcus on april 15th 1994 as a part of uruguay round agreement with the reference to the wto consider the following statement the highest authority of the wto is the general council which must meet at least every 2 years all the major decision in wto are taken by two thirds majority of the members present and voting which are the correct i think you know about that it's yes, only and only d because both are incorrect the top most decision making body of wto is the ministerial conference top most decision making making decision making body is a ministerial conference which usually meets every 2 years which meets every 2 years it brings together all the members of the wto all of which are countries or customs union the ministerial conference can take decision on all matters under of under any of the multilateral trade agreement in between each ministerial conference the daily work is handled by the three bodies whose membership is same they only differ by the term of reference under which each body is constituted it's a general council it's a dispute settlement body it's a trade policy and review body general council dispute settlement body and trade policy review body the wto describe itself as a rule based member driven organization rule based member based member driven organization all decision are made by the members government and the rules are the outcomes of the negotiation among the members wto agreements foresees votes where consensus cannot be reached but the practice of the consensus dominates the process of the decision making with the reference to the agreement on agriculture aoo of wto which of the following these are the green box subsidies which of the following is are the green box subsidies farmers training program subsidies on fertilizer disaster relief to the farmers green box it should not be a part of 3 2 as yes, of course one three is right the agreement on agriculture agreement on agriculture aoa contains various agricultural policy to be adopted by the members countries this includes reduction of tariffs on imports elimination of export subsidies export competition and reduction of domestic subsidies domestic support and limiting it to the permissible types of subsidies green box contains those type of subsidies 
green box contain those types of subsidies that don't distort trade that don't cause only minimum distortion only cause minimum distortion hence they are permitted subsidies and thus are non reducible subsidies green box subsidies are provided by the government through the variety of programs like the provisions of income support to the farmers during the crop failure incentives to the farmers to protect the environment subsidies for each for research for development food aid to the poorer people etc these subsidies are provided through the programs without influencing the current level of the production and prices the member countries thus can give a give green box subsidies without limits provided they comply with the relevant criteria the green box measures comprises of several types of support measures or subsidies they basically comprises of the two support groups first involves public service programs for example research training marketing promotion infrastructure domestic food aid public food security the second involves direct payment to the producer by the government this mainly involves income guarantee security program natural disaster state financial contribution to crop insurance programs aimed at adjusting structural and environmental protection program regional development programs green box measures are compatible with wto framework and hence are totally exempted from the reduction commitment with the reference to the de minimis provisions under the wto consider the following de minimis it is applicable to the blue box subsidies under the agreement on agriculture under these provisions the trade distorting domestic support is allowed up to 10% of the value of the production for developed countries and 5% for developing countries both are correct under the de minimis provisions developed countries are allowed to maintain trade distorting subsidies or amber box subsidies amber box subsidies to level of 5% of total value the agriculture output for developing countries this figure was 10% all the domestic support major which are considered to distort the production and trade fall into the amber box subsidies under the aoo example suppose input subsidies such as subsidies on electricity seeds fertilizer irrigation market support price subsidies are also fall under this box msp is also put under the amber box because it distort the trade and something production consider the following statement india has accorded most favored nation status to the old wto members countries India is generalized. India is a generalized system of preference GPS nation of the United States. That was the time I won't remember about that. You know about that? Both are incorrect. Article one of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, nineteen ninety four, requires every World Trade Organization members country to accord most favored nation status or preferential trade terms. With respect to the tariffs and the trade barriers to the all other members countries, accordingly, India accorded most favored nation states to the all WTO members countries, including Pakistan, from the date of the entry into the force, so-called Marcus Agreement establishing the WTO. But India withdrew the most favored nation status accorded to Pakistan in 2019 after the Pulwama terror attack. A generalized system of preference GP GSP or GSP is a preferential tariff system which provides tariff reduction on the various products. The concept of the GSP is very different from the concept of the most favored nation. Most favored nation status provides equal treatment in the case of tariff being imposed by a nation, but in the case of GSP, differential tariff could be imposed. by a nation of the various countries 
depending upon the factors such as whether it is developed country or it's a developing country. Both the rules come under the purview of WTO. As US terminated its preferential tariff being granted to India under the generalized system of preferences scheme 2019, India continues to enjoy the tariff preference under the GSP from Australia, Russia, Japan, as well as European Union, among the others. Which of the following reports is are published by the World Economic Forum? It's a global enabling trade report, network readiness index, global gender gap index, World Economic Forum. It's, I think it's a three is the part of them. One, two, three. Global Enabling Trade Report, Network Readiness Index, and Global Gender Gap Index. Global Enabling Trade Report was first published in 2008 by the World Economic Forum. The Enabling Trade Index measures the factors, the policy, and the services that facilitate the trade in goods across the border and designation destination the enabling trade indexes measure the factors like poor factors like policy services that facilitates the trade in goods across the border and to designation a destination it is made of of four sub indexes like market access border administration transport and communication infrastructure, business environment, the World Economic Forum Network Readiness Index, NRI, Network Readiness Index, Network Readiness Index, this is the World Economic Forum Index, also referred to as a technological readiness, measures the propensity for countries to exploit the opportunity offered by the information and communication technology. It is published in the collaboration with INSEED. The report is regarded GITR, the most authoritative and comprehensive assessment of how ICT impacts the competitiveness and well-being of the nations. The Global Gender Gap Report was first published in 19 on 2006 by the World Economic Forum. This index is designed to measure the gender-based gaps in access to resources and opportunities in countries rather than the actual level of the available resources and opportunities in those countries. With a reference to the World Economic Forum, WEF, consider the following. World Economic Forum has observer status with the United Nations, the Great Reset is an initiative of World Economic Forum to rebuild the economic sustainably following the COVID-19 pandemic. Which are the correct only and only? B is the right. World Economic Forum was established by Carl Schwab in 1971 and is a not-for-profit foundation. It was initially named as European Management Forum. Later it changed name to the World Economic Forum in 1987. It aims to improve the state of the world by engaging business, engaging business, political academy, and other leaders of the society to shape the global, regional, and industry agendas. The World Economic Forum claims to be impartial, that is not tied to any political partisan or national interest. Until 2012, it had observer status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council when it was revoked. It is under the supervision of the Swiss Federal Council. The foundation's highest governance body is the foundational board. The Great Reset is a proposal by the World Economic Forum, Great Reset, to build the economic sustainability. A sustainability following the COVID-19 pandemic, it is based on the assessment of the world economic is in deep trouble. Consider the following statement. 
A trademark is a property right issued by a government authority allowing the holder exclusive rights to the invention for a certain period of time. Patent product words and design eliminate the identity source of the product. Copyright protects the original work of authorship such as writings, art, architecture, music. I think it's a very, very, very good question because only three is the right, only C is the right. Patent, patent, a patent is a property right issued by the government authority allowing the holder, allowing the holder exclusive rights to the invention for a certain period of time. Suppose this is, a, this is, a, this is something I devised. I, I I I discovered this. I something research it on it. So I got it exclusive right to this invention for a certain period of time. A patent safeguard an original invention for a certain period of time and is granted by the United States Patent and Trademark Office USPTO. by granting the right to produce a product without fear of competence competition for the duration of the patent incentive is provided for the companies or individual to continue developing innovative new product or services there are three types of patent utility patent plant patent and design patent trademark trademark protects word and design elements that identify the source of the product brand names and corporate logos are primary example a service trade service mark is a similar service marks is similar except that is safeguard the provider of a service instead of a tangible good. The term trademark is often used in the reference to the both designation. Copyright. Copyright protects the original works of the authorship such as writing, art, architecture, music, album. It's a copyright. For as long as the copyright is in effect, the copyright owner has the sole right to display, share, perform or the license in the material. With the reference to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, consider the following statement. Most OECD members are high income com economics with a very high human development index. India is a member of OECD, not at all. Only and only is right. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, is an intergovernmental organization, economic cooperation with 38 member countries. It's a forum of countries describing themselves as a committed to democracy, the market economy, providing a platform to compare policy experiences, seek answers to the common problems, identify good practices, coordinate domestic and international policy of its member. Generally, generally, OECD members are high economics with very high economic development index, SDI. Are regarded as a developed countries. The OECD is an official United Nations observer. Although the OECD does not have the power to enforce its decision, which further require a unanimous vote from its members, it is recognized as a highly influential publisher of mostly economic data through the publication as well as the annual evaluation and ranking of the members countries. Which of the following is are the main objective of monetary policy? To maintain the price stability, to substitute export, to control business cycle. Only and only one and three should be a part of the answer.
the credit and the monetary policy is a macro economic policy laid down by the central bank it involves the management of the money supply and the interest rate and is the demand side economic policy used by the government of the country to achieve a macro economics objective like inflation consumption growth liquidity in india the monetary policy of the rbi of india is aimed at managing the quantity of money in order to meet the requirements or of a different sector of the economic and to increase the pace of the economic growth the main objective of the monetary policy are to regulate money supply in economic the main aim of the monetary supply of the rbi was to control the money supply in such a manner to expand it to meet the needs of the economic growth at the same time contract it to the curve inflation in other words monetary policy aimed at expanding and contracting money supply according to the needs of the economic to attain price stability another major objective of the monetary policy in india is to maintain the price stability in the country it implies control over inflation price level is affected by the money supply monetary policy regulates the money supply to maintain the price stability to promote economic growth an important objective of the monetary policy is to make available the necessary supply of the money and credit for the economic growth of the country those sectors which are requisite to promote economic growth an important objective of monetary policy is to make available necessary supply of money and credit for the economic growth of the country the sectors which are quite significant for the economic growth are provided with the adequate availability of credit to promote saving and investment by regulating the rate of the interest and checking inflation monetary policy promotes saving and investment higher rates of interest promote saving and investments control business cycle boom and depression are the main phases of the business cycle the monetary policy puts a check on boom and depression to promote export and substitute imports by providing concessional loans to export oriented and import substitution units monetary policy encourages such industries and thus help to improve the position of the balance of payment to ensure more credit for priority sector lending monetary policy aims to provide more funds for the priority sector by lowering the interest rates such of the sectors priority sector include agriculture small industries weak sector section of the societies and many more to develop infrastructure monetary policy aims at developing infrastructure it provides concessional funds for developing infrastructure consider the following statement repo rate is the interest at rate at which the central bank of a country lends money to a commercial banks in in the event of inflation central bank decreases the repo rate how both are only on one is right because there is something lack of this because i also think about that repo rate is a interest rate at which the central bank of country lends money to the commercial bank at very short period for a very short period so because uh, the differences between the bank rate and the repo rate should be clear because this is the same process for the bank rate and this is the same definition of the repo rate so you will be confused so be clear that repo rate is for short period for one day for 14 day central bank in india reserve bank of india rbi uses repo rate to regulate the liquidity in economic in banking repo rate is related to repurchase option or repurchase agreement and there is a shortage of funds commercial banks borrow money from the central bank which is repaid according to the repo rate applicable the central bank provides a short term loans against securities such as treasury bills or government bonds this monetary policy is used by the central bank to control the inflation or increase the liquidity of the banks the government increases the repo rate when there is a need to control the prices and restrict the borrowing on the other hand the repo rate is decreased when there is a need to infuse the more money into the market and support economic growth and increase in the repo rate means the commercial banks have to pay more interest for money lent to them and therefore the change in the repo rate eventually affects the public borrowing such as a home loan emi etc consider the following statement when reverse repo rate is increased when reverse repo rate is increased it leads to the excess flow of money into the economic while repo rate is used to control 
cash flow in the market reverse repo rate is used to regulate liquidity in the economic चलिए डी इज द राइट आंसर बिकॉज रिवर्स रेपो रेट इज द रेट एट द सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ कंट्री पेज इट सेंट्रल बैंक पेज इट टू द कमर्शियल बैंक टू पार्क इट्स देयर एक्सेस फंड इन द सेंट्रल बैंक रिवर्स रेपो रेट इज ऑल्सो अ मैंडेटरी पॉलिसी यूज बाय द सेंट्रल बैंक आर बी आई इन इंडिया टू रेगुलेट द फ्लो ऑफ मनी इन द मार्केट वेन इन नीड The central bank of a country borrows money from the commercial banks and pays them interest as per the previous repo rate applicable. At the given at the given point of time, the previous repo rate provided by the RBI is generally lower than that of the repo rate. While the repo rate is used to regulate the liquidity in the economy, previous repo rate is used to control the cash flow in the market. When there is inflation in the economy, RBI increases the previous repo rate to encourage the commercial bank to make. deposit in the central bank and earns return this is term absorb the excessive funds from the market and reduces the money available to the public which of the following is are the components of the revenue expenditure revenue expenditure utility of rent salaries of the employees manufacturing equipment not at all only in 2 and 3 would be answer revenue expenditure are the short term expenses used in the current period or typically within a new one year within a one year revenue expenditure include the expenses required to meet the ongoing operational cost of the running of business thus are the essentially the same as operating expenses revenue expenditure also include the ordinary repair and maintenance costs that are necessary to keep an asset in working order without substantially improving or extending the useful life of the asset revenue expenditure includes following salaries and employees salaries and employees wages any overhead expense such as salary for the corporate office which typically fall under selling general and administrative expenses research and development utilities utilities and rent business travel property taxes capital expenditure represent the significant investment of the capital that a company makes to maintain or more often to expand its businesses and generate additional profits capital expenditure can include the purchase of the following the facility the facility or the factory including an upgrade or expansion vehicles vehicles such as trucks used for delivery of product manufacturing equipment which of the following is are the measures that can be that can be used by the government to reduce the fiscal deficit reduction in the expenditure on the major subsidies such as food fuel food or fertilizer increase interest payment on the past debt simplifying tax taxation structure only and only one and three is the well will be answer the differences between the total revenue and the total expenditure of the government is termed as a fiscal deficit this is the difference between the total revenue and total expenditure when your expenditure is greater than your than your revenue that will be the fiscal deficit it is an indication of the total borrowing needed by the government while calculating the total revenue borrowing are not included borrowing are not included in the indian context the following measures can be adopted to fix to reduce the fiscal deficit and therefore to reduce the inflationary pressure in the economic a drastic reduction in expenditure a drastic reduction in the expenditure on major subsidies such as food fertilizer export electricity electricity to curtail the public expenditure can reduce the inflationary pressure in the economic a huge sum of money equal to 20000 crore are spent on major subsidies on food fertilizer export promotion by the central government each year with a drastic cut in the subsidies over time it's a difficult to reduce the public expenditure to an applicable degree another useful measure to cut public expenditure is to reduce the interest payment on the past debt in india interest payment account for about 40% for the expenditure on revenue account of the central government you know 40% of the expenditure on the revenue account of the central government 
the reduced fiscal deficit and thereby check rise in the inflation rate apart from the reducing government expenditure government revenue has to be raised as regarding as regards mobilizing resources to increase the public revenue it may be noted here that the policy of the moderate tax with simplified taxation structure should be followed this is this will help to increase the public revenue rather than reduce high marginal rates of taxes should be avoided as they serve as disincentives to the work more save more and invest more this is a simple theory save more invest more further high marginal rates of direct taxes cause evasion of taxes the term regard ricardian equivalence preposition refers ricardian equivalence Ricardian It's a B is the B is the answer B or is a C It is stated that the financing government is spending out of current taxes or the future taxes will be equivalent effect on the overall economic It's a Ricardian Yes Economics Ricardian equivalence is an economic theory Ricardian equivalence is an economic theory that says that financing government spending out of the current taxes or yeah, future taxes will have the equivalent effects on overall economic. This means that attempts to stimulate an economic by increasing debt financed government's spending will not be effective. Not be effective. This means attempt to stimulate an economic by increasing debt financed government spending will not effective because investor and consumer understand that the debt will eventually have to be paid for in the form of future taxes the theory theory argues that the people will have people will save based on their expectation of increased future taxes to be levied in order to pay off debt and this will offset the increase in the aggregate demand from the increased government spending with the reference to the fiscal policy consider the following statements fiscal policy it is a counter cycle in a counter cycle fiscal policy counter cycle fiscal policy the government increases expenditure and reduces taxes during the recession in a pro cycle fiscal policy government reduces public spending or increases taxes during the expansionary times yes both the statements are only a is right cycle city of a fiscal policy simple refers to change in the direction of the government expenditure and taxes based on the economic condition this pertain to a decision by the policy maker based on the fluctuation in economic growth there are two types of cycle fiscal policy counter cycle and pro cycle counter cycle fiscal policy refers to the steps taken by the government that to go against the direction of the economic go against the direction of the economic or business cycle thus in the recession or slowdown the government increase expenditure and reduces taxes to create demand that can drive an, an economic boom in a pro cycle fiscal policy the government reinforce the business cycle by being expansionary during the times of contractionary during the recession simply acha ke sath acha bura ke sath bura pursuing a pursuing a pro cycle fiscal policy is generally regarded as a dangerous it could raise macro economic volatility depress investment in the real and human capital hamper growth and harm the poorer with the reference to the fiscal policy what is meant by crowd out effect simple question it 
सो डी विल वेल सर ए सिचुएशन वैन इंक्रीज इंटरेस्ट रेट लीड टू अ रिडक्शन इन द प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टमेंट स्पेंडिंग सच एज सच दैट इट डेम्पेंस द इनिशियल इंक्रीज ऑफ द टोटल इन्वेस्टमेंट स्पेंडिंग इज कोल्ड क्राउडिंग और इफेक्ट समटाइम्स गवर्नमेंट एडोप्ट एन एक्सपेंसनरी फिजिकल पॉलिसी स्टांसेस स्टेंसेस एंड इंक्रीज इज स्पेंडिंग टू बूस्ट द इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी दिस लीड्स टू द इंक्रीज इन इंटरेस्ट रेट्स हाउ इंक्रीज इंटरेस्ट रेट अफेक्ट द प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन हाई मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ क्राउडिंग आउट इफेक्ट मे इवन लीड टू द लेसर इनकम इन इकोनॉमिक With the higher interest, rates, the cost of the funds to be invested increases, and the affects their accessibility to debt financing mechanism. This leads to the lesser investment ultimately, and the crowds out the impact of the initial rise in the total investment spending. Usually, the initial increase in the government spending is funded using higher taxes, if we borrowing on a part of the government. Consider the following statement regarding fiscal multiplier. Multiplier, fiscal multiplier. It measures the effect that increases in fiscal spending will have on the national GDP. Fiscal multiplier tends to be larger during the expansion compared to the downturn. Which are the correct? Fiscal multiplier. Only and only A is the right. Fiscal multiplier measure the impact of the fiscal stimulus on a GDP of an economy. Fiscal multiplier is driven by the government spending on a tangible things like building infrastructure or social. programs there are two types of fiscal multipliers the expenditure multiplier and the revenue multiplier the expenditure multiplier it measures the change in the output for every extra dollar spent on the government a revenue multiplier it measures the change in the output for every dollar increase every dollar increases in revenue collected by the government high levels of debt can reduce the impact of the fiscal multiplier high level of debt can reduce the impact of the fiscal multiplier of course it is because the any fiscal stimulate is used to service debt before being used for the more productive activities hence the output increases by the smaller amount which means the fiscal multiplier is reduced next question Debt to GDP ratio depends upon which of the following parameters. Debt to GDP, interest rate, growth, differential. Interest rate growth differential. Debt to GDP ratio in the previous period. Ratio of the primary deficit to GDP. Primary deficit. Debt to GDP ratio, which on interest rate. You know about that the debt to GDP GDP ratio. This is debt. This is GDP. The ratio of the debt to the GDP is calculated. This is get debt to GDP ratio. For interest rate, definitely debt to GDP ratio in the previous period. That would be. That would be. That would be maybe ratio of the primary deficit to the GDP. बोरोइंग तो हिस्सा ही नहीं है तो आई थिंक ओनली ओनली डी इज़ राइट आंसर सब के सब सही है डेप टू जीडीपी रेशियो इज़ द रेशियो ऑफ़ द कंट्रीज़ पब्लिक डेप टू इट्स जीडीपी पब्लिक डेप बाय जीडीपी द हाईएस्ट द हाईएस्ट द डेप टू जीडीपी रेशियो लेस लाइकली द कंट्री विल पे बैक इट डेप and higher its risk to of default which could cause a financial panic in the domestic and international markets the debt to gdp ratio depends on the three key parameters namely irgd the debt to gdp ratio in the previous period and ratio of the primary deficit to gdp interest rate growth differential interest rate growth differential igrd refers The differences between the nominal rate of interest in an economy 
and a nominal rate of growth. The differential between the nominal rate of interest and nominal rate of growth. Primary deficit is the differences between the current year's fiscal deficit and interest paid on the borrowing of the previous year. Primary deficit is the difference between the current year's fiscal deficit and interest paid on the borrowing of the previous year. Which of the following is correct regarding the Startup India scheme? The scheme is designated specifically for promoting entrepreneurship among the aspiring women and STSC entrepreneur. DPIIT is the nodal agency is mandated to coordinate implementation of Startup India initiative with other government departments. It provides a startup for freedom from capital gain tax for first three years of operation. Which are the correct? I think three is absolutely the part of the answer. Two and three is the right answer. The Startup India scheme is initiative of the government of India. That is in 2016. The primary objective of the Startup India is the promotion of the startups, generation of employment, wealth creation. The Startup India has initiated several programs for building a robust startup ecosystem and transferring India into a country of job creators instead of job seekers. These programs are managed by the Department for Industry Policy and promotion DPIIT. Startup India scheme is different from Stand Up India scheme. Startup India scheme promotes new initiative and ventures. Whereas Startup India nahi, where Stand Up India scheme is designated for promoting entrepreneurship among the aspiring women and SCST entrepreneurship. Stand Up India is one of the core part of the Startup India in order to encourage the individuals to bring their ideas to life. Features of the scheme are 10,000 crore startup funding pool, 10 reduction in patent registration fees, improved bankruptcy code, to ensure 90 day exit window, freedom from inspection from the first three years of operation, freedom from capital gain tax from first three years of operation, freedom from tax for the first three years of operation, self certification compliance, created an innovation hub under the Atal Innovation Mission to target 5 lakh school and to involve 10 lakh children in innovation related programs new scheme to provide IPR protection to startup firms, built startup oasis as Rajasthan incubator center. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana? The objective of this scheme is to provide loan up to 10 lakh to the non-corporate, non-farm, small or micro enterprises Mudra loans are directly given to the micro enterprises without the involvement of any bank branch. Absolutely incorrect. He is the right. Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, a scheme launched by the Honorable Prime Minister on 8 April 2015 for providing loans up to 10 lakh to the non-corporate, non-farm, small or micro enterprises. The loans are classified as mudra loans under the PMMY. Mudra is a refinancing institution. Mudra does not lend directly to the micro entrepreneurs, individuals. Mudra loans under the Pradhan Mantri Yojana, Mudra Yojana can be available of form from the nearby branch of office of a bank, NBFC, 
national financing institutes and it is see under the aegis of the pradhan mantri mudra yojana mudra has created product scheme the intervention have been named sisu kisor tarun to signify the stage of the growth development and the funding needs to funding needs of the beneficiary micro unit entrepreneur and also provide a reference point to the next phase of the graduation growth to look forward sisu covering loans up to 50000 kisor covering loans up to 50000 to 5 lakh tarun covering loans from 5 lakh to 10 lakh with the reference to the price stabilization fund psf scheme consider the following statements price stabilization fund price stabilization fund scheme is created to help regulate the price volatility of important agri horticulture commodities it is used to advance loan to fund stabilization scheme is used to advance loans to the state government and central agencies at 4% per annum to support their working capital and other expenses on the procurement and distribution intervention for the agriculture or for the horticulture commodities which are the correct i think so the a is the right answer price stabilization fund is a fund created to absorb extreme volatility in selected commodity price like onion potatoes pulses they are also added subsequently the sum in the fund is usually used for activities aimed at bringing down or up the high the low prices say for example acquisition of certain goods and the distribution of the same as when the appropriate so that cost remain within a range price stabilization fund scheme provides for the advancement of the interest free loans to the state government ya union treasuries and the central agency to finance their working capital and other expenses which they may incur in the procurement and the distribution of such commodities consequently the actual use of the fund depends on the willingness of the government of the state union treasury to use such loans for these purposes furthermore the actual identification of the time in which the assistance is needed and the implementation of this price support measures are left to the states apart from the domestic procurement from the farmers or the wholesaler mandis import may also be undertaken with support from the fund which of the following statement is correct about regarding tejaswini scheme tejaswini scheme seeks to empower the adolescent girl with the basic life skill and thereafter provider provide further opportunities to acquire market driven skill training indian government has signed financing agreement a financing agreement with the world bank for funding of this scheme the jaswani scheme is only and only sees the right answer both this statement correct the jaswani the jaswani it is a scheme for the socio economic empowerment of the adolescent girl and young women it seeks to empower the adolescent girl with the basic life skill and thereafter provide further opportunities to acquire market driven skill training or completion of the secondary education it is three main components expanding social educational economic opportunities improve livelihood opportunities by developing participant skill strengthen women participation in the local governance indian government has signed financing agreement with world bank for funding of this scheme 